Avatar The Last Airbender, the live-action version, has recently released some costumes that the characters will be wearing. We get to see what Aang, Katara, Sokka, and the like all look dressed up. This is good, of course. And it has also led to a lot of analysis on not just whether these costumes are good, I'd say they are, but what does this mean for the show? What have we seen so far? What have we yet to see? A lot of dynamics that are integral to what the show is doing going forward. So let's think about what is costume design? What is the point of it? What is the purpose? What does it do? What is the function of a costume? On the most basic level, there are two components to that. What it means for the character themselves, and what it means for the world that the character is in. For the first question, I think we should focus on that. Is the question that yields more immediate interest when discussing clothing in regards to characters. There is a certain relationship between what a character wears and who that character is. Now, this kind of relationship exists among everyone, assuming that you're not in a situation where everyone has to wear the exact same clothing, such as in a school that has uniforms. Clothing is chosen by you, the person wearing it, and as such, it typically expresses some element of your personality. Now, that does not mean, of course, that the kind of clothing that people wear does not have any societal import whatsoever. It, of course, does. Clothing exists within a set of social conditions, which we will discuss in a moment. A quote-unquote cool person looks fundamentally different now than they did back in the 1950s or in the 1850s. But clothing still expresses personality. It expresses it for ordinary people going about living their lives, and it especially expresses personality for characters. People often say that nothing in a show is incidental. Nothing is lacking importance. And that's to a certain extent true, but it should not be taken as everything is symbolic in the narrow sense that symbolism is often used where thing X conveys feeling Y or message Y. That's not how literary symbolism usually works. There are multiple meanings, there are multiple different valences and impressions to everything. That does not mean there are not wrong answers you could give if someone asked, oh hey, what does that symbolically convey? But it also means that there is not just one right answer. Even the most obvious example of symbolism, such as the green light on the end of the dock in The Great Gatsby, has a plurality of different meanings and resonances when looked at from different perspectives. That is the import of symbolism. It imbues an object or an experience or an idea with more than a simple representational meaning. It is not just thing X equals thing Y. It is this experience a character has, or even something as simple as this piece of clothing a character wears, has this certain resonance. It has this certain purpose. If a character dresses casually, it means something fundamentally different than if they're dressed in a suit and tie on an everyday occasion. Now, whether or not you think that someone dressing in a suit and tie, for instance, 
on an everyday occasion has resonance in terms of conveying a person's inner soul or inner self in day-to-day -day life, you could say that's questionable. But in art, in the controlled and rarefied space of a work of art, where everything is chosen for a specific effect, a specific purpose, a specific significance, then yes, clothing has a lot of importance. Clothing is tied to identity and both can change. If a character is dressing one way and then they start dressing another way, that has significance, that has symbolic weight and that should be looked into. Even all the way back in Hamlet, he's talking about how he's wearing black because it conveys the inner torment of his soul. Yes, Hamlet is the original goth boy. You look at something like Thomas Carlyle's Sartor Resortus, I totally butcher that. The Tailor Retailored is the English translation of the title. He talks about how clothing conveys a certain identity, and if we change our clothing, that is, that is in itself a kind of shift in identity, a shift in not just social significance, but significance on a grander, more existential level. It conveys some essence of ourselves. Okay, so all that preambling aside, what do I make of the costumes in Avatar that we've seen so far? Well, I think they're quite good, but I've already said that. I also think they're a bit pretty, a bit costumey. But that's only because we only see them in promos. We have not actually seen them in action. I don't necessarily think this is a problem, except maybe with Aang. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure Gordon Comier, the actor for Aang, will do well. But he's the one I'm the least certain about of the four. Katara and Zuko's actors both look great. Their costumes both look great. I have no doubt about those characters. Aang I'm a little more uncertain about, especially with the brightness of the arrow on the forehead. In the animated version, the bright arrow is not a problem. It fits in with the world. But in the live action version, there might be more of a clash. And there's nothing innately heretical with saying that the arrow has to work differently, perhaps, in live action than in animation. Now, people can disagree with that viewpoint, but animation and live action are different mediums and they have different strengths. And clothing especially belongs to the world. It should be considered in the context of the world. And live action TV or cinema is fundamentally a different world than that created by animation. The rules work differently. The boundaries of the world are set differently. Animation lends itself to a lot of exuberance, a lot of contortion, a lot of wildness and stylization that live action doesn't. But ultimately, we'll have to wait to see how the clothing works in the world of the show. There's only so much we can tell through these promo shots. Clothing is ultimately dependent on the world. We've touched on this point before, now I'm going to return to that point. Clothing has to create a world. It needs to talk about what kind of time period and what kind of society that these characters are living in. Now, for something like a Victorian period piece, if you're making an adaptation of Portrait of a Lady by Henry James, for instance, what you have to do with the clothing is, on a superficial level, quite simple. Just make it look like it did in the time period. But even then, you're still working with signifiers and you're trying to translate those signifiers into the modern day. 
a character who wears, for instance, a dress that does not look particularly risque by modern standards, but would be by the standards of 150 years ago, needs to be presented in such a way that the audience fundamentally gets how the clothing acts in this bygone world, in this late Victorian world. And the same rules, honestly, are true for a fantasy world. We do not know a priori, for instance, the clothing signifiers of the Fire Nation or the Water Tribe, because these places don't exist. They're based on real places, but the places themselves don't exist. We only know the information that things like clothing and hairstyle convey to us within the world of the show. For instance, we see Zuko and Iroh cutting off their top knots at the start of season two of the animated show. We understand the significance of that, even if we are not directly told the significance of it within the world of the show, and even if we do not know the Japanese context on which the Fire Nation is based. Clothing works similarly here. We want to see the clothing be used. We want to see how it looks on everyone in the Water Tribe, for instance, in terms of day-to-day -day life, and we want to be able to compare Zok and Katara's clothing against the clothing of the ordinary peasants of the Water Tribe. How is it similar? How is it not? All of these are questions that, that are about the clothing, of course, but they are also about the world of the show. Looking at the clothing is nice, and the clothing looks pretty, but ultimately we cannot really judge it and think about whether it looks good until we see it a bit dirty, a bit worn by crazy events or just the wear and tear of day-to-day -day life. We want to see how the clothing interacts with the world and how it exists as an extension of the personalities of these characters, and I am interested to see how the show will do that as it finally releases in 2024. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this before anyone else. What do you think about the new live-action Avatar now that we finally got some information about it? Post your comments in the comment section below. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon, that I promise you. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.